Serious. People have read it. What is the scariest thing that happened to you that was not paranormal? I, female, was traveling in Egypt with two male friends, all of us 17 to 18, at the time, 1989. We were walking down the street in Alexandria, and two men got out of a black car, grabbed me, and threw me inside. My friends jumped onto the car and held on while it tried to drive away. Then, other people started crowding around it and shouting, so they opened the door and shoved me back out and just drove away. May 10th, 2019. I was turning into the end of my street when a dump truck rear-ended me, pushing me head-on into oncoming traffic where I hit another car. The dump driver was texting and never hit his brakes. He was going 60 miles per hour. Technically, I was dead. A cop was two cars back. He pulled me from the wreckage and performed CPR, reviving me. I was medevaced away. I remained in a coma for 42 days, where I expired twice more. I woke to be a paraplegic. A group of guys approached me and my friend late at night at a fast food place, insisting we give them a ride to the nearby college and insisting they weren't going to try anything. Mind you, these grown men approached two obviously teenage girls at probably 10 at night and was adamant that we give them a ride. They proceeded to call us cold-hearted bitches when we, more like I, as my friend just sat there, told him absolutely not. The college wasn't really that far away, maybe a 10-minute walk, and it was the middle of summer. Friend disappeared once she ordered her food, and I went to go get my fountain drink. The bigger of the dudes got up in my face once again and began hammering me for his gas money. Again, told him no over and over. I was almost in tears. He proceeded to cuss me out some more before him and his group of guys left. I don't know if they had any ill intentions, but as two petite teenage girls late at night, the dudes definitely gave me a weird vibe, especially when they insisted they weren't going to try anything. My friend told me she felt bad in case they actually needed help, but I told her I'd rather be seen as a cold-hearted bitch than end up missing or dead. When I was 12, I often snuck out at night from our mobile home that I shared with my five siblings, mom, and abusive stepdad. I would walk half a mile to the nearby elementary school and swing on the swing set for an hour or so and then sneak back home. One night, on my way to the school, a stranger grabbed me from behind dragged me off the road into a wooded area and raped me. Most of the fear was me afraid I was going to die. The pain was unimaginable. He would smash his fist into the side of my head every time I screamed and I was starting to black out. And I remember crying, so scared that I would never see my baby siblings again. Then I woke up at the break of dawn alone in the underbrush, got dressed after finding my clothes, snuck back into our home, took a shower, and got dressed in some baggy clothes I went into my sibling's room to watch them sleep for a little bit. I didn't end up telling anyone about this until after I had broken down about it in therapy a couple of years ago. It took me until last summer to finally tell my mom, who now has trouble speaking and looking at me because of the intense guilt she feels, both at letting me be abused by her then-husband and the rape. I still have nightmares that I'm being beaten to death, surrounded by pain. I was raped again at 24, but it just didn't come close to the first one, if that makes sense. It wasn't nearly as terrifying, though obviously still awful. Almost 30 now, hoping nothing like that ever happens again. When I was in college, I had gone to a classmate's apartment for a group study session. The area was crowded with cars parked along the curve. It took me a while to find parking, and it was about two blocks away. By the time I left to go home, it was around 1 a.m. As I was walking back to my car, I heard footsteps behind me. I looked back and saw someone in a big coat and wearing a hat. It was dark, so I couldn't see their face. I got a little creeped out, so I quickened my pace. Again, I heard their pace quicken as well. I began to feel scared, but I didn't want to convey that to him, so I just kept walking and occasionally would look back and see him about 10 feet behind, following. As I approached my car, I took out my keys and got ready to unlock just the driver door instead of using the remote. I quickly got in and locked the door, and he stood right in front of the passenger door, just looking at me. I turned the car on, and right when I was about to leave, he waved, but in a very slow, creepy way. When my husband and I lived at our old apartment, I would have the window cracked open during the summer because of how hot it was. Well, one morning I woke up to my husband next to me, covering me in the blankets. I was nude, 
and didn't want blankets because of the heat. I heard the voice of a man I didn't recognize say, Sorry, sorry. I was startled, but without my glasses, I couldn't see very well. I was terrified, seeing the blurry figure of a man halfway in through our window, like he would have made it all the way in and turned towards us. My husband told him to shut up and get the fuck out, or he'd get his gun. We don't have one. He left, saying, Go back to sleep. Husband called the cops. It wasn't the first or last time we were bothered by that same man. For background, the man was abusive. His daughter ran from home and he thought I was her because he never got a good look at my face. He tried calling the cops on my husband a few times for kidnapping. He would pond on our door and threaten my husband with knives saying that his daughter needed to come home. He kept trying to get to me when my husband left for work. I still have issues over it. I work from home and even though we moved, I'm still scared of loud knocking and sounds by the window. I was badly bitten by a dog when I was 10. I lost a lot of blood. But I was under my grandmother's supervision and that poor lady panicked at the slightest bit of something being maybe not okay. I mean, I saw her panic for a bee looking like it might enter the house or because she had heard someone break hard down the street. So when she saw me, with half of my upper lip falling off and blood everywhere. She screamed and screamed and screamed and panicked. So, I panicked even more as well. Not really because she panicked, I already knew that my grandmother's reaction weren't really telling of the situation's gravity, but because I thought I was fucked, because there was no one to help and care for me now. This was the scariest part of it all, actually. I mean, the bite and the blood were scary, but thinking that I was on my own with a severe injury with no idea of what to do and unable to communicate was downright frightening. However, our screams alerted my neighbor, who was a very calm man, and kept his head and took care of me until EMT came in. I've been told that he did have a panic attack afterwards. The poor man. There's a popular fishing spot by me in a local river that sometimes can have pretty fast water. The weekend before an elderly man was wearing his waders, fell in the water, sunk because of his full waders, and was washed down the river, unable to get up because of the fast water. My boyfriend and I decided the next weekend we would fish down river from that spot. We knew the water was high, and were going to be extra careful in light of recent events. Well, I had just lost 25 pounds and hadn't been in fast water since then. My boyfriend got out in the river and held his hand out to me to help me cross. I get to him, and I find that the rocks are just flowing out from under my wading boots. I knew what was happening, and I was terrified, because I was in waders, and there was a large and very deep pool just downstream from me. I was leaning against him, and told him I can't get my feet under me. From there, it escalated to him bear-hugging me, and trying to push me to the bottom so I could walk out. He's nearly the same size as me, so I figured we were both going to be swept away. I kept fighting him because I thought it was him picking me up, not the water. Eventually, he was able to throw me to the edge of the riverbank where I went under. I was then able to kneel up and be stable while my waders were completely flooded. We got out of the water and decided to never fish at that spot again. <laughs>